So where is the breakthrough? The breakthrough is in every single little thing that you're avoiding, every single thing that you're embarrassed of, every single thing that you put way back behind you, you don't wanna have exposed. And what's interesting is you stay in the pattern because the unconscious mind, the soul is so brilliant, it will continue to bring it forward until you get the lesson. You know, one of the interesting things with the shadow and, and, and our past and the darkness and the things that we're so embarrassed of, uh, the, the experiences as, as a child that we push back and push back and push back, it's like a slingshot. Until we embrace it, we're not going to get through it. You've gotta go through it to get to it. And so, you know, I've posted four videos recently. I believe it's four, if I can count well. I'm kind of huffing and puffing, just finishing up a workout here on the island, yeah. Um, but I talk about our big why, and I talk about um, personal responsibility, and I talk about um, commitment, and then I talk about abundance. And if you look at all of them, except for really the big why, or you know, and, and I'm not about the big why, I'm about the what's the one thing. But if you look at three of them, they're foundational principles. And principles are constant, they're like gravity. It's like if I were to take this weight that's here on the ground and hold it and drop it, it's going to drop every single time. If I let go of it, it's gonna drop every single time. And so really what you've gotta, yeah, you've gotta have plans and strategies and tactics, but if you don't have guiding principles, you're going to continue to, I'm going to continue to revert back to form. Those things are gonna show up. You know, a great book, Malcolm Gladwell wrote about this in his book, Blink. And he talks about the, the mind and the brain. It's kind of like the black box when an airplane goes down. You know, the first thing they go to is the flight recording box. It's got all the history. It's got everything that happened. Well, our mind is like that too. We've got a black box with recordings in it and we've got a couple choices. You know, we can avoid it, we can record over it, or we can constantly visit it. You know, a question I'm asked all the time is this, is how do you stay sober? And, and I don't know, you know, there's so many statistics out there and I don't know that they're polling people, but someone said that 90% of all people that, you know, get sober, don't stay sober past five years. And, and here's the one thing that, that I shared. And, and it's, it's where the, the, the ultimate breakthrough is that you're looking for, is that I visit it every single day. Every single day. I visit the darkness, I visit the things I'm embarrassed of, I visit the traumas and the dramas of my life. I visit the stories that I created. But here's the piece that I want you to really capture when you start taking a look at, at breakthroughs. It's, you know, we, we talk about our feelings. Feelings are a choice. They're a choice based on how we interpret things. It's based on how we interpret things. That will decide our emotions and how we process it. So number one, things are going to happen. So I get a choice on how I get to interpret it. I get a choice on how I get to process it. When we live in avoidance, see the interesting thing, and I work with a lot of salespeople and, 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 and all of us deal with rejection in some way, shape or form. And we have this big challenge with rejection. And there's some people that don't have a problem with rejection. And you know what the challenge is with rejection is because there's a recording going on in the back of your mind, the unconscious mind of you rejecting yourself. You ever thought about that? Each and every one of you, write it down right now. What are you embarrassed of? What do you want no one to know about you? And I'm not saying you need to go out on social media and tell the world, you know, what you're so embarrassed about with yourself or something that's happened, but you've got something that you're resisting about you. You've got something that you want to reject. Well, I'm gonna share a couple things with you. There's so many memes out there, but rarely do people unpack them. That which we resist will persist. It's a principle. It's universal law. That which we resist persists. So watch this, I'm, I'm a salesperson, or I'm a leader, and, and, and I need to challenge someone, or I need to, to move towards a conflict so it doesn't turn into drama, but I'm, I'm afraid of rejection. Well, you're not afraid of the rejection that's going to take place there. You're, the, the challenge is back in your unconscious brain, that continual rejection that you have of something in you. And so what am I saying? I'm saying that you've got to learn to embrace every aspect of you every aspect of you. The breakthrough is when you say, you know something, I have my duality. So I have my challenges that came with alcoholism, how I was as a parent, how I was as an employee, how I was as a friend. I was none of those in a good way. I was none of them. And you know what, I don't reject them. I look at them, I was talking with my daughter last week about an experience we had where she was standing over me and it haunted me for a year and a half in my sobriety, the first year and a half, 
because I didn't have the alcohol to medicate things, which I'd always, always had. I mean, you know that one thing where it just punches you in the gut and maybe you're going through it right now, whether it's a breakup or an experience with a family member or you lost a, a family member or something like that. You know that one feeling, it's just like this sick feeling. I had it for a year and a half, her standing over me saying, you know, I fight for my life every single day and I'm watching you kill yourself as I'm shaking in withdrawals. Can you imagine carrying that? And you may sit there and say, well, you deserve it, you did it. And that's okay, and I, and I don't judge you for that. I, I understand, because you don't understand, <laughs> if you will. Um, and and, and I, I validate everyone's opinions because they're your opinion and they're your truth. We were talking last week, you know, as we continue to, to talk through her experiences of, you know, her health challenges and going through the, the Vegas thing and just life. She's a 25 year old young lady and we talk about our relationship and we go back to, you know, she's moving through things in her life. We go back to the challenges that we've had, that I had personally, that, that we've worked through and we look at the relationship that we have. And so we, we draw upon those painful places. See. Here's what happened. I had one of my coaching clients that I've worked with for a long time, and I always uh, maintain confidentiality. Just, you know, sent me a text message, just happy as could be, and then got on the phone happy as could be, and, and, and you know, had, had, had moved to a different space and, um, from, from where they were to, to, to this enlightenment that they want to experience. And, and by no means am I the, the breakthrough guy, and all of a sudden it happens because the breakthrough really is finally seeing the lighthouse through the fog. And then the rest of your life is traveling through. It's a little less foggy and just shooting for that lighthouse, but you see that light. It's not this, oh, I've arrived. Could you imagine if we just arrived and everything was perfect? I mean, how boring life would be. It's a constant journey. That's where people fail miserably too. But you know, what was interesting is, is I, I went back and checked and I said, okay, what was it? Let's, we've gotta do some reverse manifestation because you're gonna have experiences now. You've got that black box, those old recordings for many, many years. And, and unconsciously, we'll go back to those spaces from this good space that we're in. It's not like, hey, I broke through, what is it? And it went back to the first assignment I give and, and um, to, to many people, depending on where they're at, as they say, and it's, you know, maybe they come to me because, hey, you're committed, you're a little bit motivated or whatever it may be. And, and so the first thing I say is, awesome, let's write down all your dramas and traumas, everything you're embarrassed about, everything you don't want anyone to know, everything you feel bad about in your life, everything that's happened to you, happened around you, that's bad, that's negative. I want you to spend a whole week on that. And like, what? Wait a minute. Because everyone else out there is saying, write this positive affirmation. Lie to yourself. Lie to yourself. I mean, that's really what it is. Lie to yourself. Don't embrace what you are. You know, create these words that aren't true. I'm not saying don't do those things, but see what happens is, what most of you are being trained to do is live in avoidance of yourself. You're taught to live in avoidance of yourself. You're taught to resist yourself because it's all this positive mental stuff. I mean, look at this. I mean, Tony Robbins is great. Gary Zukoff is great. Um, all, all these motivational people are great, but what do we do? We go to it, we get excited, we go back, and it's a downer. Most people, it's a downer. We revert back to form. How come? Because we're not taught to visit our darkness. We're not taught to embrace our duality. So what this person had done, and it's, I've got a podcast, it's, um, um, writing out what's killing you on the inside to get it outside of you. See, here's how the human brain works. When we write down our pains, our dramas and our traumas, we start writing it down. We start to believe that we're releasing ourselves from it. You know, you've probably heard a lot about journaling, how important it is, but has everyone ever broken it down to you? What happens in this wonderful, amazing thing that we have called our brain? What number one, you allow more space to come in as something new when you write it out. Number two, there's a release that starts to take place, okay? Number three, let me ask you this. When's the last time you saw all of your thoughts? See, when you start getting squirrely, when I start getting squirrely, write it out. And here's what happened. Someone asked you, gosh, you seem happy, things are great this, to this person. So what have you been doing? Says, I've been writing down all my shit, all my crap, writing it all down. I look at it and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm writing it all down. And the more I look at it, I laugh at it because it's a story. The more I look at it though, I start to look at it and say, okay, that's a part of me. And then the more I look at it, I have a choice of interpretation, okay? I have a choice of interpretation. And you know what the big choice is this? And here's your little assignment. Number one, I'd suggest go to my Interrupt the Pattern podcast and go find, I don't know, I forget what episode it is, shame on me, but it talks about writing out what's killing you on the inside to get it outside of you. Writing out what's killing you on the inside to get outside of you. Here's the next thing I want to do. I want to support you with this. Everything's interpretation. Listen, you know, when you live a life like I did for 41 years of, of, of drunk and not present, and, and I'm only 51, I mean, I'm not like an 11-year-old, 10-year-old child. 
in my emotional maturity, maybe I'm a little bit more mature, and you might be saying, no, you're about a nine-year-old. You know what? I'm okay with it. Well, whatever. But um, do you think things still show up that, 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 that I have to still clean up from my past? Absolutely. I get them all the time. Had some things come up this week, but you know what? It's not this, oh man, there I am, and this is terrible. All right, good. There's something incomplete there. There's a lesson coming forward so that I can be better and I can do more for others. See, I get the, I've got the picture. I know what my purpose is. So I know what my purpose is. I know what the path is. And so the message to myself is crafted. It doesn't matter what business plan, all these goals and things. If you continue to have things inside of you that are haunting the shit out of you, and we all do. I mean, I've sat in some brutal rooms of some people as we've gone through this work and seeing what they've gone through and sitting there for hours with them and saying, we're not leaving this room until you take that horrific experience and you write down three things, three things that has contributed to your life in a positive way. Because one thing is true with the universe, God, however you prefer to look at it, is this is everything has its duality. Everything has this duality. We have a choice to be a victim. We have a choice to be a creator. So here's what this person did. This person wrote out all their dramas, their traumas, all these things. And you start looking at them and kept looking at them, kept looking at them, kept looking at them. And you may say, you know, and everyone's got an opinion. Oh, well, then they're just going to believe it. and think, No, there comes a point where you really just start laughing at it and say, this is bullshit. <laughs> Whoa, I'm holding myself back from that because here's what we do. When we do that exercise, you know, looking for that breakthrough. And the breakthrough isn't everything's changed, but the breakthrough is where I now see the lighthouse through the fog. Is is when you start writing down, okay, what did that tough experience treat me? I mean, my, my stepfather was um, uh, an amazing impact on my life. He was um, uh, um, very much a disciplinarian. <laughs> um, and there were times where it challenged me. And um, uh, a great human being just is I think we all walk our path and, and today I know the discipline that I have but that's the contrast and then so I look for that in everything I look for that in everything is it Pollyanna no because I go back and I visit those moments too that didn't feel so good so stop hiding from yourself stop listening to the bullshit of what you need to tell yourself you, you need to tell yourself that you are this act as if but at the same time, have right along with you. On my right shoulder is this person that's striving, is this person that's, that's, that's doing my best every single day. On my left shoulder is this person that was a drunk, that was a father, that wasn't present, that wasn't a good husband, that wasn't a good employee, that wasn't a good friend. See, that's not my story anymore, it's my history. It's my history that shaped me, and that's where the breakthrough is. Write out all the things that haunt you. Write out all the things you're embarrassed about. Write out all the things that give you pain. And you know what you're going to find? You're going to find the path to happiness and freedom. You're going to find the path to happiness and freedom. So kind of packing these things on, you know, what one thing, what one thing would a choice or a change or a decision you make, you know, do um, to change your life over the next year? Just one thing. Keep it really simple. Okay. Take personal responsibility for all your experience. See how this weaves in. Okay. Own it. Okay, how did I bring it forward to me? You know, you've got to make commitments, okay? Specific, measurable, actionable, okay? You've got to operate in abundance. You've got to give everything that you have that people have given to you. You've got to be a vessel. You've got to pass it through. And now start taking a look at the breakthrough. You've got to visit your shit because you can take all those steps that I've just shared with you. And I'm going to continue to through the end of the year. Heck, maybe forever. Who knows? Till I fall over. <laughs> But, but, in, but until you unpack these things, if you don't unpack this one thing right here on, on really what the path of the breakthrough is, of visiting those things that haunt you, you know, that which you resist persists. And you know what? Things may be going wrong for two or three years, but you know the problem with the shadow? And, and a great book for you to read is The Shadow Effect with Debbie Ford, who I sat with for two days and did this work when I was about two years sober because I was seeking. I needed the help. Is, is, um, it's going to show up at the worst time possible. Now, here's the final piece, and it's what I was talking about on, on a couple of my coaching calls, is we think that we're kind of vulnerable and transparent and, and, and in a, you know, we're in a tough spot. Oh, my gosh. And you know what? That's really the safest spot because we're really, we're really exposed and there's no way but up, really. I mean, when you hit real, real rock bottom. You know the most dangerous spot for you right now is when things are really, really good because that ego creeps in and that ego tells us it's okay. You know, people say to me, okay, when, when do I break through? Never. I've been clean nine years, Okay. 
I've been clean nine plus years. And, and being clean is one thing. You'll see a lot of dry drunks, people, and you know, but they don't do the soul work. But you know what? I'm doing work every single day. See, when you get comfortable, that's, I mean, we're vulnerable. <laughs> we're so vulnerable when things are really, really good because we get comfortable. That little ego creeps in. So you know what? I do revisit those things. I revisit that darkness. I revisit those things I'm not proud of and look at them and I recognize they're not my story. They're my big bullshit excuse I use today. They're my history that shaped me. When you write things out, the unconscious brain starts to feel that it's leaving you. When you write things out, you can now see your thoughts that are jamming you up and you can start to discern when you write things out, you leave more space to come in and you're gonna allow more people to come in and you're gonna allow your higher self to come in. So that's where the breakthrough is. Um, I think I'm gonna go hiking or something today. Anyways, much love to y'all.